And so when you understand who you are, you understand your beliefs by evaluating your past, you then can start asking yourself, who am I? Who am I at my core? What do I truly care about? And unco uncover your values. And then you can take that list and go, great. It doesn't matter what I do for a living, but it matters how I do it. It matters that I show up this way with these values every single day. And then you'll be happy. Then you actually, you will get enjoyment from it. And that gives you some more freedom because then I, then you can say, how do you want to show up right now at work to live these values? And then how can those help you reach your goal? If you're looking to leave the nine to five and to elevate your side hustle, the Hustle the Day podcast is the podcast for you. Your host, Trent Bray, left the nine to five grind behind and is helping others do the same and focus on the future. Hear from others who have done it and how they did it. Jump in as we talk entrepreneurship, mindset, and strategy. Just take it one day at a time and hustle the day. On this episode of the Hustle of the Day podcast, I have Dr. Benjamin Ritter on the show. Ben is a fascinating individual who talks about his experience in the corporate world, leaving that, and is now helping people leave their corporate jobs or become entrepreneurs where they are growing within their company. Lots of great stories, lots of great nuggets. Let's jump into it. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Hustle of the Day podcast. My name is Trent. Super excited and honored to have Dr. Benjamin Ritter on the show today. Ben, why don't you jump in? Tell my audience a little bit about yourself. I feel like I have to start talking faster because I'm in this like very calm mood right now. And I've been talking like <laughs> this and pretty slow, but I'll try to meet you. I'll try to go faster. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> gotta, I'm forced gotta dial up the, the hustle. switch. I'm hustling it. Okay, I'm hustling it. Got to get some hustle energy. Uh, so basically, everybody, I work with senior managers up to executives, create a career that they can love. And that's, you know, they're, they're feeling stuck. They're feeling unfulfilled. They're feeling like they've been basically reacting to their career instead of being proactive towards what they truly care about. They're a leader, but they don't feel like a leader. They've experienced success, but don't feel successful. And they're not able to take action. And so I work with them to develop their skill sets that relate to self-leadership. And that involves clarity, confidence, and control. So really defining your personal brand believing in that brand, like you can actually take action and do the thing that you want to do, setting those goals, and then creating an environment that serves you. And I'm pumped. I've been doing, I've been coaching for 10 years. I've been, I worked in healthcare, worked in, I've worked in hospitality. I've worked for nonprofits. I've worked in membership organizations with CEOs. I've been a contractor. I've done curriculum development. Like I've been, if you ask me about my career history, it's everything from handing out flyers on a street corner to, you know, cleaning tables, flipping burgers, working with kids, to being in a boardroom with a bunch of executives and then working with executives that probably are, you know, 20 X my worth. So it's, it's a wide range. I'm happy to be here, happy to express my connection to hustle. And man, now I just have too much energy. I just want to keep talking. <laughs> no, that's great. Uh, that's why the audience is here to hear, hear from you, not, not to hear from me, but uh, one thing you, that stuck out to me as you were saying that intro is you talked about reactive versus proactive. And before we started recording, we talked about that with you, how in your career, you had always been reactive versus proactive. So how has that played into being able to help other people out in those similar situations? The most important leader in your life is you. It's, it's the whole concept of self-leadership. The only person that cares about what you care about is you the only person that's going to make your decisions for yourself is you and so often these incredible leaders come up to me unsure of what they want unsure of what they stand for and they've never sat down and given themselves permission to answer those questions and take action towards it you know i i spent a lot of years of my life developing myself as an individual you know thinking that confidence and social relationships and attraction was more important than anything. And I'm really happy that I did because I developed into what I, I'll, I'll give myself a pat on the back. I'm happy with who I am. But along the way, I kind of got crushed in relationship to my career. I kept getting told no in a lot of ways. It, it was pretty defeating. And before I knew it, I kind of just was going with the flow. Oh, you want to give me a job? Sure. Oh, you want to give me a promotion? Sure. And it's not like I gave up on trying to find other opportunities. It's that I wasn't focused on the right opportunities because I, again, didn't believe that I could get them. And once I made that switch, once I decided to be proactive, ah, the world like opened up completely. And not because I wasn't, 
again, again, and this isn't being proactive with, I'm looking, you know, I'm going to start a business or I'm going to say yes to that job. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is, does that job align with who you are at your core? So you're going to stay motivated and entranced with it. And it's actually going to grow because you are, because you care about it. Does that job align, is the same align with your core? Because if not, you're just kind of going through the motions. You're kind of always looking for the next best thing, always trying to find what's going to make you happy instead of figuring out for yourself what's going to make you happy and going for it. Yeah. So you you talk about how you help, help senior leaders and those that you know are in those upper positions. They have these built-in beliefs that you're talking about and you have these ideas that they haven't given themselves permission to really understand what they want. They're going with the flow. Like you mentioned, how do you crack that nut open? Like that is something that is so ingrained in so many people that it takes a lot of effort, right? I have a unique perspective because the people that come to purchase coaching from me are unhappy and know they're unhappy and they know they want to make a change. I, I would love to answer that question for the people that end up not buying. And they end up going back to the same job. And I'm like, well, okay, hold on. I want to, I want to circle back with you in five years and, and really have you be open with what's transpired and, and what's, you know, what, how everything has gone. Did anything improve or change? Probably not. Um, but with the people that are open for change, like if you are aware that something's off, you can feel that it's off. Cause when you're misaligned, you know, you are more exhausted, you're more fatigued, you become a little resentful towards your employer. You blame them for not giving you meaning. You pull back from social relationships at work because you can't even think about investing another ounce of energy into your actual job. You actually stop volunteering too for work that you might enjoy because the same thing, you're looking for other things to do. You don't see the point. Why should I invest in this, in this job that I'm not gonna stick around for, that I'm unhappy with? Or you just skate by and you focus on creating other things that you might care about. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is, is help them understand. Usually the first thing that I do is that they have permission to start, to start saying no to things so they can set boundaries with work because they need to start creating more energy within themselves. When someone's really unfulfilled at work, they tend to be pretty drained. They tend to almost be on the cusp of burnout. And so if you can start creating boundaries and start saying no, it gives a little bit more energy. And then if you can bring awareness to, hey, you know those negative feelings you feel towards your job? Those are caused by you. <laughs> let's let's take a step back and let's examine those and let's say that this is the story that you're telling yourself. And then we get, once they accept that and get a little bit more energy, we can also start crafting their job itself. Who do you love working with? Who do you dislike working with? What types of projects do you want to work on? Why do you want to work on those? What skills do you want to learn? Let's start doing that more of that type of work. Because what we want to do is before we even start working on the next thing, we want to create an environment around them that gives them more energy and revitalizes them. Yeah, for sure. Now, you talked about prior to recording how you work with people that will take that situation and end up leaving their job, leaving the nine to five. And entrepreneurship isn't for everybody. But how often do you find when you're talking to these people that so much of what is built into, oh, I hate this job, I hate this company, is that personal? And can you repair that relationship? Or do they have to make that fresh start different company starting their own thing. Majority of my clients end up breaking off and doing their own thing. Guess who their first client is? Their, 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 their first, their, their past organization that they left. So if you can take the time to see the benefit and where you're at, and by the way, know where you're going. So you can build a brand that aligns with that. So you can build almost your thought leadership within your organization and you can do work that relates to the work that you want to create into the world for your own. And you can build champions within your organization that see that, that realize that. When you leave, you can turn right around and go, by the way, would you like me to be a consultant for you? Would you like to be my client? Because they value you, they respect you, they understand your work. You've started projects that you're now leaving. And if, if instead you leave because you hate your organization and you're resentful, and you pulled back from all that work and you didn't and you didn't invest in relationships you have nothing to say you have nothing to ask for so that's it's also why the that first piece of how do you make the most of where you're at right now to help you get closer to where you want to go i i made the mistake when i was in healthcare i was i was the first one out the door every day i was the one telling my boss i couldn't stay late for a meeting because i had something to do 
I was the one, you know, that, that did not volunteer for work. And I, I ruined my brand, to be honest. And all that does is hurt you later on. Like the career, uh, the, your career path, even a new business, they're not separated. They're not siloed. They shouldn't be because one can support the other. And, and I really, really hope that people that think entrepreneurship is an escape can change their definition of it and say, it's just a step forward. And so if something is a step forward or even a step sideways, then there are ways to link your career experiences with what you want to do next. Yeah, for sure. And I really like how you described that you hurt your brand because that's really what it is. You know, personal brand, people think, oh, it's what I put out on social media. It's really what people say about you when you're not around. That's what your personal brand is. So by you always being the one that leaves early, that doesn't put in the work, doesn't put in the effort, that is hurting your personal brand. And that is incredibly important in any entrepreneurship journey of establishing that personal brand, you know, living up to what your word says and you know, establishing yourself as an authority in whatever, uh, whatever category that you are in. So how do you get people who may have hurt their personal brand in that way to understand this and get them started on the right path? First, before even getting started on the right path, it's, it's doing a lot of work on understanding your defining moments and such. So when I say defining moments, I mean milestones in your career, uh, more emotional experiences that you've had, things that have helped develop the beliefs that you have, things that have been, uh, that have solidified your values. And so it takes time, go, you know, it takes some time going back and reflecting on when I've, when have I been happiest? When have I been dissatisfied? What has been a turning point for me? Even if it's something simple, but spend time actually looking at these memories and looking for the themes between them to see what your brand really is. And you may want a different brand than what you are and what you have, but it's good to know who you are right now. And it, it's good to know, you know what has made you into the person that you are, what has created the beliefs that you have. I can't tell you how many leaders that I work with that are actually afraid of being leaders because they have this story that every time they move up, they lose autonomy. They lose the ability to craft the life that they want. They, so that success, more success actually equals less living. And that's a very debilitating belief for someone when they're trying to grow in their career. Or entrepreneurship means hustle, but hustle in the negative way, where I can't have friends, I'll have no money, it's super expensive, I have to start all over, I'm not going to be able to afford anything or eat anything, you know, etc. And so when you understand who you are, you understand your beliefs by evaluating your past, you then can start asking yourself, who am I? Who am I at my core? What do I truly care about? and unco uncover your values. And then you can take that list and go, great. It doesn't matter what I do for a living, but it matters how I do it. It matters that I show up this way with these values every single day. And then you'll be happy. Then you actually, you will get enjoyment from it. And that gives you some more freedom. Cause then I, then you can say, how do you want to show up right now at work to live these values? And then how can those help you reach your goals? Cause then you take those values and you set some goals for yourself. And that tends to get people thinking in a way that is more productive because they get out of all the stories that they told themselves and they get focused on what really matters. Yeah, absolutely. Now that's, that's crazy. Just thinking about that of, you know, what is your motivating factors? What are those experiences that really drive you to be who you are today? And a lot of people don't think about it that way. They think about what they want to be perceived as, and they craft a personal brand around that. And those are the times where you have that burnout or that disconnect or, you know, people try and put on a facade for so long, it's, it's going to be tiring. It's you're basically in the exact same situation where you're dealing with these people that are tired and exhausted and don't find fulfillment out of what they're doing in the corporate world. Um, and that definitely requires a shift in mindset. And you've talked about personal development and how, you know, you're big on the mindset side of things. Is it something that is easy for you to now kind of coach people through changing their mindset behind their, their core beliefs? 
I just want to say one more thing about what we just talk, yeah. uh, spoke about, because I worked with a client on it today who knows what he wants to do, is making progress to get there. And we, we spoke, you know, is a little unhappy with how long it's taking, but things take some time. Try. I worked in healthcare for seven years and I've had like four different careers. I, I you know, time, when we think about time, let's just throw it out the window. I think we're okay. Uh, and, you know, we were talking about how he could do more at work to build that brand. And he's like, yeah, but I'm not getting paid more for it. I'm not getting a promotion. Like, I, I don't, like, they don't deserve that from me. And to be fair, it takes extra effort to do more at work. It does, 100%. But it doesn't take that much effort. And, you know, like that client, he was getting in his own way of professional success because he was frustrated with not getting exactly what he wanted when he wanted it. And when it comes to our careers, we are just a player in the world, right? We're in the matrix. We're like literally, you know, it's, it's so crazy when you think about what we get paid to go in and like do certain work sometimes. I don't know. If, like, I, I remember when I used to work and I was like, uh, for somebody else and I was doing like Excel tables and I was like, wow, someone pays me for this. <laughs> like, and it's, it's just kind of funny. And so we have to just make the system work for us. It's, you know, sometimes we're going to do things that we don't a hundred percent want to do, but we have to figure out a way to be happy while we're doing them. And so I just wanted to, to throw that out there and I'm happy to talk about mindset after that. Yeah, no, I definitely appreciate that you, you brought that up because that is something that a lot of people go through is, if I put in a tiny bit more effort, I expect great rewards uh, right up front. And that's just not the way most of life works out. <laughs> like Obviously. in relationships, I bought you yeah. flowers, you know, give me everything. No, it <laughs> it's like, we went out for dinner. All right, give me everything. You know, it's like, this, life doesn't work like this. When does life ever work like this? Yeah. You know? Maybe with like pets, you know, your, your, your dog loves treats. You give him a tree, he's like follows you around for the rest of the day. But yeah, I mean, if you think about fitness is a classic example of, hey, I did 10 pushups. You know, why are my muscles not bulging? <laughs> I'm actually going to sell a new workout plan. It's going to say 10 pushup pecs. And it's just going to be, it's just going to be promoting people get massive pecs from doing 10 pushups. It's, it's going to sell like hotcakes. Yeah. You just have that little asterisk on there that it takes 10 pushups in 10 sets over 10 years or, you know, whatever it is. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have the before and after photos too, that everyone does. It's going to be this little guy and it's going to be this massive guy and little asterisk and say results may not uh, be the same for you. Yeah. <laughs> results may vary. That, that covers it all. <laughs> um, so I wanted to jump a little bit over to the mindset side of things. How important has that been in your own path? And how important is that in those that you're helping? So the, the framework of self leaders, the three C's of self leadership, clarity, confidence, control developed because they, they, I found through my work with clients and my research that they are responsible for someone to be able to take action and feel, feel good about themselves, et cetera. Cause when I first started my business, it was the live system, live for yourself, the live system, a decision-making tool. And I'm like, Oh, people can't make decisions though, if they don't have these other things. So let's work on these other things. So clarity, which is, is really the main piece is you know, who you are and what, and what you want to do. And it's everything, what, when, how, et cetera. So it's who you are at your core and what are the goals that you want to set for yourself? Break them down to mini steps. Like what is the one thing you can do to bring 80% of the results of your major goals? And there's a whole process with it. But when you have clarity, and the reason why I'm talking about this, because it relates to mindset. When you have clarity, you create confidence. It's incredible how often I work with, pay, with, uh, with clients that have uh, high levels of stress and anxiety and you know, they want to focus on the anxiety and I go, let's focus on clarity first and how it just settles their mind because now they're walking into a room and instead of thinking, you know, what are other people thinking of me? How do I fit what they're thinking of me? They're now thinking, this is what I believe in. I want to share what I want to believe, what I believe in. And if someone else doesn't believe in it, you go, but I believe in it. I've done all this work to know why I believe in it. And it's such, it's such a powerful, different perspective and image. It develops confidence. 
And then of course you have to, you have to do some more work on some of the belief systems that you have and reframing them to fit you. And then also, you know, other than internally, you have to do external work when it comes to confidence. You have to go learn some stuff if you don't know it. I don't know how many times I've worked with a service-based entrepreneur that wants to create a coaching practice and they're like, I've never coached before, but I'm a coach. Or they want to launch, you know, a, a bar and restaurant, never worked in a bar and restaurant. So there's some skills you need to go learn too, let's be honest. But that mindset, that first piece that has to do with the internal confidence, the belief in yourself, you know, the inner champion, not the inner critic, and knowing what you stand for and what you believe in, foundational. You don't got it, good luck. Like, it's, things aren't going to work out. You tell me, you show me a time where you think that, you know, you've given up or aren't taking action in your life, 100%, that mindset piece is missing, missing clarity. And, you know, I've known enough people in my life that are, that are super clear on what they want to create and super confident in it and have just crushed it. And I know some people that, that are not confident, but super clear and they've missed out. So, you know, that it's, but that's the action piece without clarity. None of that can happen. Yeah, absolutely. So we've talked a lot about what you do to help people, but I want to take it back to your journey where you went through all these different things to gain out of healthcare, starting your coaching, you know, where did this entrepreneurial journey begin for you? The minute I was born, my father used to drive around alleys, picking up old toasters and refrigerators and TVs to bring them home and fix them. I used to go with him and, you know, we'd go, he had a little home remodeling business, like a little meaning him and me. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, we would fix toilets and drywall and sewage stuff. And I think that really made a difference. You know, he never really had kind of like a nine to fiver, like my mom did, but he didn't. And uh, I think that that really nudged me along because I remember like first business I had walked the neighbor's dogs. You know, I always had this idea that working was, was important. Working was a great way to make money and money was good and you should like to work. And I've always liked to work. I remember I asked my parents, like, why did I start working? And they're like, you just asked us if you could go get a job. And I was like, I worked, at, you know, on the cash register and, and cleaning tables at the local fast, uh, Poochie's Deli, which was basically a fast food joint. And I just always, always looked for something to do to make money, not to spend money, just because, I don't know, I just, I felt like it was important. And then entrepreneurship just grew because uh, I wanted to be a professional soccer player. And so I never actually thought that I'd work a nine to five. So those two things together led me to just really being really confused about why anyone would want to work behind a desk sometimes, or I just had no aspirations for that. And, and that just grew from there, just based on a variety of experiences that I had. Now it's, it's funny enough that I kind of adapted to this philosophy of, well, work is the way it is. And working for an organi organization sometimes can be really beneficial to build career capital and expertise and thought leadership, et cetera. But we have to do it in a way that serves us. So uh, entrepreneurship, I don't know if you've heard of that. Uh, I remember once I sent an outreach message to someone and I was like, I work with entrepreneurs. And they sent me back this letter like, don't message me and you spelled entrepreneurship wrong. I was like, no, I didn't. So then I started adding entrepreneurship with it, entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship, just because people like didn't know what it was. But I, I, I very much support this idea of how can you be an entrepreneur within any organization? Like, I feel like we're so limited if we have these beliefs of we have to work. If we work for an organization, we have to do it this way. And I think that is one of the reasons why we're, we get so unhappy. And some people aren't meant to be entrepreneurs. It is tough. It is really tough to be an entrepreneur. There's no safety. There's no health benefits. There's, you know, like there's no 401k. Like you, you can get, you can get them. They cost a lot of money, um, but it's like, it's, uh, it's so interesting. Um, you know, I started as this entrepreneur and then I merged into this like entrepreneurial type of mindset where now I understand the benefit of just work in general. Like there's no good or bad. It's how you want to work. That's it. And then show up that way. No matter if you work for an organization or you work for yourself. Yeah, I love that. I So I've interviewed people who are entrepreneurs and that's what motivates them. That's where they like to be. And I love everything, the way you describe that of, uh, 
you know, it's, it's all about the way you want to do the work. And for me, I want to be an entrepreneur for my own reasons. And so it's, it's great that everybody understands that you don't have to be an entrepreneur to get what you want out of it. But uh, for a lot of people in my audience, they do want that. And that's, that's great as well. So I know we're running a little bit short on time because you've got to move on to some other things, but I've got, I, I would typically ask this and I want to ask it to you in particular is as you were going through this entrepreneurial journey, what was your biggest failure and what did you learn from it? Uh, you're going to hate my answer. So I remember I would host a workshop on failure and I would ask people what the the opposite of success was and they'd all say failure and i'd go no the opposite of success is stagnation it's nothing failure is success failure is progress i'm, sh I'm sure you've heard that before I'm, I'm sure our listeners have as well anytime you're moving and learning that's great that's awesome that's success I, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs and I tell them, hey, this first business that you're so concerned about starting and you haven't started yet because you're so worried about perfectionism and such and so you procrastinate, well, you're prob if you actually get started, you're probably going to start some other ones because you're an entrepreneur and that's what entrepreneurs do. Like, show me an entrepreneur that has one business and I, I, will, I will be like, you've showed me a unicorn. Like, this is amazing. I'm like, does he, does he lay golden eggs? I was like, this is weird. <laughs> So when it comes to my biggest failure, uh, I think it just has to do, you know, I'd say uh, one, okay, two, one, focusing, believing that an external achievement was my purpose, period. So soccer, that was a big mistake. Maybe who I am, a big mistake. Two, not launching the first company that I actually built to like li literally to the point of launch and not launching it. And I, I'd say two of those were my biggest failures. Yeah. And, and that's the way I phrase that question is what did you learn from it? Because I believe as well, uh, failures are only failures if you let them be. And honestly, they are learning experiences and they are great to push you to the next level and help you learn from that. So I love that answer. It's a great answer. Um, so I feel like I missed the punchline. Hold on. So what I learned from it, so uh, you're, you're greater than your purpose. Like you're literally the God of your purpose. Purpose is never supposed to be enough. It's supposed to be never ending. That's how you stay motivated. That's why it's important. So don't stop trying to complete your purpose. It doesn't. And um, purpose is not an external achievement. Purpose is, is really just where you create. Uh, it's the way you enjoy your day more, period. That, that's literally the, the reason why it exists. Uh, and then launch your damn company. <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't realize that you'd gotten so close to the launch before you gave up on that first company. So, uh, you know, we talked about that a little bit before, but yeah, definitely launch, learn from it, move on to the next thing, whatever the case may be. That That's definitely a way to get started is to start. You know, I, I really appreciate the time that you've taken out of your day today, Ben, to talk to my audience and to me. So I want to ask you one final question, but before I do that, I want to give you an opportunity to tell people where they can connect with you online and find more information out about you. You can just go to liveforyourselfconsulting.com. That's liveforyourselfconsulting.com. There's a, a free guide that you can download for creating a career that you love. I also really enjoy conversations. Reach out to me on LinkedIn. Send me a little message, Dr. Benjamin Ritter. A lot of my posts are video content on this topic, articles, random, random ideas that I have. Uh, would love to chat with all of you. Let me know that you came from this show. Maybe, maybe I'll have a little something extra. Perfect. I, I appreciate that. So the final question, and I guess I should mention, I will include uh, links in the show description as well. So people can connect with you a little bit easier. But the final question I want to ask you personal or business, what is it that excites you about the future? Oh, I think people are just coming to terms with the fact that the way that they see the world is just based on how they've been taught to see the world. I just see like people waking up a little bit more. And I think this goes along with self-leadership and living for yourself. And it's like, hey, you don't agree with people in your life? That's cool. You don't have to go do other stuff or you know, the systems that are in place, like, for example, this work life 
thing that we got going on, you know, it shouldn't have taken a global pandemic to cause us all to go work remote. And for people to step up and say, no, I don't want that job because it doesn't make sense. I don't want to do that. It doesn't make So people, I think, are waking up to what they feel is important to them and then living it. And so that I'm really excited about. Yeah, that is 100% true. Agree with all that, that, you know, what? it shouldn't have taken that to get to where we are now. So, you know, I appreciate you taking time out of your day, Ben, and, you know, appreciate you speaking to my audience about all the things that you're passionate about and that you know about. So I know I've gotten a ton of value out of this. So I know my audience has gotten value out of this. So I encourage you all to get out there and hustle the day. Hey everybody, thank you for watching this video all the way through here on YouTube. One thing that would help us out tremendously to share this value with more people is if you subscribe to the channel, like the video, make a comment, share it with others, click that bell notification to say, hey, I want to see more videos like this. That would tremendously help us out and I would sincerely appreciate it if you did that. Thank you again for watching.